All right. Welcome to our Thursday edition of the virtual family um, orientation. Uh, this is our third session, and uh, I want to thank everyone uh, for joining us. I'm sure I'll see some uh, folks hopping on in the next few minutes. Uh, we'll follow the same kind of uh, uh, routine I'll, uh, I've shared on my screen um, the schedule for the next few weeks. Again, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, my name is Vinita Dillon and I am um, the director for new students as well as family programs. And I've been with the campus many, many years. Um, <clears throat> welcome again. And our topic today is Corps of Cadets and our leadership program. And um, for those families who are joining us for the first time, I would like to go over what you can expect on move-in day, which is August 20th, Sunday. Uh, and then we'll move into a couple of housekeeping items. And then from there, we will, um, I'll, I'll fork over the screen as um, to, the, to the presenters today. We have a commandant on, on uh, board. And also, I'm hoping a company commandant and our leadership guru, um, who I'm hoping will be joining us in, in a few minutes. Um, if you, if I look distracted, it's because I'm seeing folks um, coming into the waiting room, and I'm um, I'm letting them into uh, the session. With that. Um, Sunday the 20th, we will start out with uh, you arriving at a check-in time that will be emailed to your student uh, from housing at csum.edu. And um, once you know what that time is, uh, we request that you arrive a few minutes before that. Uh, you'll be directed to park in a parking lot. It's, num it's the letter O. You don't have to take notes. We'll be sending you an email with all these uh, details. And adjacent to that parking lot is a uh, is our PIAC, which is a Physical Education and Aquatic Center. And you'll be um, requested to go in there where you'll um, get a welcome packet uh, for your student. And the student will be whisked away into the large uh, gym inside that building where they will be handed a large tote box in which they will collect all their uniforms. While they are doing that, um, we will request your um, the families to go into uh, a, an adjacent space where we will have um, all the folks that you're meeting across these sessions. You'll be able to see them in person, ask any uh, follow-up questions. We just want to be there and welcome you. And um, uh, you can put a face uh, to the name and know that we're real people, not just a square on your screen. Um, once that happens, uh, about 30 minutes or so, you're going to go back to your car with all your belongings and your student and drive up to the designated res hall. Once you are there in the res hall, you can hop out of the car, everyone except the driver, um, and go inside with your belongings and get settled in and take care of the room as you want with your student. Uh, we'll have lots of uh, returning students, our cadet leaders, who will be there to help you um, unload and carry your items to your uh, to your room. Uh, once that's done, we. Uh, you'll have some time on your hands unless you're at the tail end of the day. Uh, these uh, these check-in times will go between 7 a.m. and 2 p.m. Uh, I talk a lot with my hands. You'll see them uh, again and again. Um, and uh, once you're done with um, once you're done with settling in, we request you to join us at the quad, where we'll have a small reception for the families. And um, Jimmy Moore, who is our commandant, will uh, take take your students and um, work with them on uh, formation, uh, how that works, and what to expect. And while he is he and his uh, team is working with your students, uh, families will be invited into our auditorium where the president will be ready to share a welcome message with you. Um, once that ends, you'll come out and you will um, watch your students in formation um, and uh, there will be a um, there will be um, a capping ceremony and I'm sure the commandant will tell you a little bit about it. 
All I'll say is that I will have tissues ready for you because it is a very sentimental and a very uh, beautiful um, moment or two. It's not very long, uh, but it is very special. Um, once that uh, is done, you will have uh, the, the early evening available for dinner or any last minute run to um, a store or do whatever it is that you need to do. We will need you to deposit uh, your students and our cadets uh, back on campus at 6.30. Uh, once you are uh, here at 6, back on campus at 6.30, um, your role uh, with regard to orientation is complete. Uh, you will be able to go home or fly back or as I always recommend, uh, take a trip to Napa, find a good winery or a tasting room at that hour um, and enjoy your evening. Um, once that is, um, <clears throat> once that happens, your students are gonna have a full week of a very robust orientation program. And um, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen. Everybody's taken a quick look at it. Um, and once that is complete, um, uh, they'll, they'll be with Jimmy Moore uh, and his team for the evening and housing folks in the evening. Um, we request that you wear comfortable shoes for the day and dress in layers. It can get really warm in the afternoon and the evenings are windy and can be cold. So keep that in mind. And uh, with that, uh, housekeeping uh, for today, please keep your devices on mute. Uh, um, and as you are listening to our presenters, uh, feel free to uh, put your questions in chat and I will uh, read those out in a little bit um, after the pre presentations uh, are done. And with that, um, I'm requesting our presenters to hop on, unmute, introduce themselves, share with the families how they interact with uh, students and um, any details that they feel are important to families. Um, with that, take it away, comment on more. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jimmy Moore. I'm actually an alum of Cal Maritime. So I, uh, I graduated from here in 2010 with a MT uh, Bachelor of Science, as well as a third mate unlimited tonnage license. And I sailed in the industry after graduation for about 10 years in various capacities. So I had the opportunity to work for the U.S. Navy uh, as a contractor for about five years, sailing all around the world, hitting every international port you could think of, and then worked for a bit of time as an operator, a captain on the Alcatraz Cruises Ferry. And then after uh, the beginning of COVID, I came to work for the same school that I graduated from. And uh, I got to tell you, since I've been back, it's been really exciting to uh, get to know and make the institution thrive in the way that it really should. And uh, we got to say, we're very excited to meet all the new cadets who are coming here. Uh, we are just rolling off of a very, very successful summer cruise. So this last summer, uh, beginning in May, all the way through July, we sailed the training ship Golden Bear for the first time internationally in five years. And uh, the smiles and the stories uh, and all the successes can be uh, actually viewed in live form if you go to the Follow the Voyage blog on the website. And uh, like I said, I'm just very excited to be here. Um, I'm part of the Cadet Leadership and Development Division on campus. And that is uh, the entire encompassing division that takes care of all of the basic needs for every cadet on the campus. So when they need assistance to, for different things, um, it is our job to connect them with the resources they need. And so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up a slide that I created for the occasion. Bear with me for a moment. Okay. 
So everybody should be able to see my screen. Moment, there it is. Move this off to the side. I have a quick explanation of what the Commandant's Office does and is here for, and then a really amazing video that one of our cadets took on board the Golden Bear this summer. So uh, our Commandant's Office is the professional staff who is uh, in charge of the leadership program for the cadets on campus. Uh, I'm the interim Commandant of Cadets at the moment. Uh, the current Commandant of Cadets is on military leave. Um, which makes me the uh, the new commandant, which is good. So uh, I'm also serving in a role as the deck company officer. So the way that the Corps of Cadets is structured on the campus is you have the deck, uh, the engine, and the marine policy and management companies. Uh, within those three companies, you have four different divisions, uh, one, two, three, four. So it would be 1D, 2D, 3D, 4D, uh, one E, 2E, 3E, 4E, and 1M, 2M, 3M, 4M. Don't worry if it doesn't make sense now, it will by day two. <laughs> the pictures that I have up here, that's our team. Um, we have myself, uh, we have engine company officer Gary Rossi and MPM company officer Craig Henneke. Uh, to give you a brief history on the other two, uh, Gary is actually an ex a Navy SEAL, and he participated in the United States Navy for a very long time, and we are very happy to have him as part of the team. Um, his leadership experience uh, is vast, and he's actually going to be running our Edwards Leadership Development Program, which I'll tell you about in a little bit here. And then MPM Company Officer Craig Henneke uh, comes to us with a background in mental health and education from Sacramento State. So, uh, he will be the professional staff member um, looking after the oceanography, ISS, uh, and business IBL majors. Uh, so I wrote out a list of, well, maybe before we go on, actually, just a real quick explanation. The two pictures up top you see were actually taken on this cruise this last summer. Uh, that is the Golden Bear anchored in Cabo San Lucas, and we successfully uh, navigated 354 people around the globe, and that was our first stop being at anchor, transporting people via uh, boat to shore. And the one on the right you see is actually uh, us right before the reception um, in Samoa. And uh, I'm on the right there, along with Captain Bannister, our new rock star of the training ship. Um, and so really looking forward to getting uh, everybody involved with more along the waterfront this year, and we'll tell you about that more later. But some of the things that our office does, uh, so we support cadets through professional resource connection, uh, general greetings and introductions, formal support for classes, watch uh, formation, et cetera. The resource connector part, um, that is referring them to the resources they need or they may need or may not be aware of. We have leadership programs and opportunities. Um, the Edwards Leadership Development Program is one that's going to be front and center with all of our cadets this year. Uh, every cadet will have an opportunity to grow within this program, and uh, it's a, it's a four-year development course that we have sponsored by Tom and Libby Edwards. Uh, there's actually a new section of the brand new building in Mayo that's devoted to that. Um, and then we also, the Commandant's Office uh, is kind of the cadet liaison for both crews and international experience as well. So part of the program here is having uh, every cadet, uh, if you're deck or engine, go on the Golden Bear for the summer cruise. And then if you are uh, a part of the ISS oceanography or IBL degrees, uh, you can participate in the international experience. And from the talks that I've been having with Captain Bannister and other campus partners, uh, we're looking to combine, potentially combine those this year, which could be really cool. Um, having the international experience, that internship uh, style uh, travel, support the crews and vice versa. Uh, we also teach self-discipline, accountability and professional development. So this is accomplished through the watches, through the formation, through the uniforms, um, all of those different things. 
And you can see the example in the top right is us and our salt and peppers. We also have the khaki uniform. Uh, if you do need a reference for the uh, various uniforms and kind of what it's all about, uh, you can research online and look up the 2022 to 2023 cadet handbook. That's the cadet handbook from last year. Uh, the one that you will all be receiving um, will be, or what the cadets will be receiving will be uh, an updated version of that, but uh, that will be handed out uh, in the week prior or uh, right at orientation. Um, it's not gonna be too different just to give everybody a heads up on that. Uh, other than that, I just wanted to show kind of a quick video. Uh, we have a lot of really amazing footage from this last summer on the cruise and I'm pretty hyped up about it and I'm excited to share it with everybody. So just real quick, this is a nice drone shot that we have of the Golden Bear. This was while we were sitting at the international dateline at the equator. So the Golden Bear was completely stopped and uh, it took a massive amount of effort to get to uh, cross the international dateline at the equator. And uh, we hosted, we actually hosted what I believe to be the very first wedding at the international dateline at the equator as well. So a lot of really fun stuff with the program. Um, it takes a, a lot to get to the point to where we can do things like this. But that's the best thing about it is day one, um, when the when a cadet arrives on the campus, they are being offered opportunities to grow and learn, and the experience they get is invaluable to any other program. And back to Vanita. Thank you, um, Commandant Moore. I'm so used to calling him Jimmy, though, so forgive me if I kind of go into that. Um, we had hoped um, that our company officer whose photo that you saw, our former uh, Navy SEAL, uh, uh, would be here. He is in charge. He's fairly new to the campus and uh, he's taken um, Edwards leadership program um, by the, he's, he's taking the reins for that. Um, I can talk a little bit about it. Um, and if there are questions that, that you ask and we don't know the answer, to we'll, we'll uh, circle back with you at the next one. Uh, we partner with a uh, organization called Center for Creative Learning, and they have uh, created a program uh, for us in leadership, and that is an eight seminar um, program, which we invite all our students to opt into. So we don't, uh, it's not a mandatory thing that they have to do. Uh, in spring, we will open it up for uh, interested students to sign up and take these eight seminars. Um, and the content is from CCL, the Center for Creative Learning, and uh, they come in uh, to the campus and train facilitators. Uh, one of them, uh, I'm, I'm one of the facilitators. I don't know, Kamana Amar, are, uh, more, are you um, a facilitator? No, but I will be very soon. <laughs> okay, so um, so we have um, several campus constituents who are uh, facilitators, and uh, we meet for an hour eight times uh, over the course of the semester and go over the content. There's some follow up. There's some journaling uh, that comes from the one hour content uh, distribution and dissemination and. Um, following years, this is the first year the incoming students go through this uh, seminar series. And in the following three years, there are other opportunities like attending conferences, um, as well as um, working with uh, campus departments to uh, develop leadership skills. Um, one of the uh, one of the, the big conferences that we send students out to is a Naval Academy con leadership conference. And then we invite um, our students to support an uh, in-house um, leadership conference, which is for women uh, every spring. So that uh, kind of talks a little bit about uh, the, the program. And if Gary were here, he would give you more details. So if I see any questions popping up in chat, um, we'll definitely get, get you the, the responses. And I should be able to answer anything else regarding that as well. Uh, I Great. can 
find out the uh gary just had to step out he had a, a emergency had to go home so apologies but we can get the questions okay. answered if you have them okay um so how we usually go um for those of the uh, families who are new to this uh, please write your questions for kamana more or me in chat and uh, we'll field them the best to uh, to the best of our ability um, if there are questions um, related to future sessions, I usually hold off on answering them because we want you to hear from the experts on that topic who will be coming um, to future sessions. So if there's anything that you wish to ask us, please do. Uh, in chat, I have included a link to a form uh, which asks you a uh, some contact information. So if you will, please complete that for us. We are trying to capture um, both emails for uh, or multiple emails for families uh, of our students, as well as um, find out if uh, our uh, students have had any family members who've, who've attended Cal Maritime. So if you will do us a huge favor and and answer uh, or complete that form i'd appreciate it um there is a question that says is there additional cost to attend the program any prerequisites uh, the answer to that is no uh all the cadets need to do is apply to the program and it is included in the cost of everything they're already doing here and and there are no prerequisites either no prerequisites no uh, and, here uh, is, I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to follow up with, uh, you know, a lot of the times people will ask if our uh, Naval Academy trip for that leadership conference is uh, costs, and uh, that will be also if you sign up and you're, uh, there's usually uh, an application process, but the cadets that we take, it's, it's sponsored by the Edwards Leadership Program. Yeah, so these opportunities, there's no additional cost even if there's travel involved. Um, Jimmy, were you going to add the link for uh, the cadet handbook? I actually already did. Okay. Um, and it was right before that comment. So if anybody- Oh, there it is. Okay, the sorry. It's right there. That's, uh, like I said, that's uh, last year's cadet handbook. We'll have a new one, but there aren't too many updates. It's really just names and phone numbers. I think that we're finalizing and then uh, that new one will be hopefully online uh soon you know hopefully uh the week before orientation so that people can look um and then during orientation we will uh the cadet leaders who are going to be joining us um will actually go over the handbook even the commandant's office will be involved so the students will get an idea of what is enclosed in that or included in the handbook um, so it's not it's not a foreign uh, document it, it really gets utilized on a fairly regular basis especially how to wear your uniform and um, what the expectations are so we are um, so this is the department that is not the only department but one of the key departments um, that really cover that whole aspect of what it what it means to be a cadet and uh, how we are a little bit different from universities as an academy uh, a, a large expectation of that uh, falls falls on uh, Commandant Moore here and his team so we need um, another question here are these sessions for students or just the parents uh, are these sessions the one we are in or the sessions we are talking about in leadership so these sessions are only for uh, families. If you have a student who wants to sit in on it, they're more than welcome. But we have designed these uh, primarily to inform families of uh, what the school does, what the expectations are, what the resources are. So when uh, your student calls you and said, "There's this doesn't happen, you will recall that maybe it does happen because we talked about it. And if it really doesn't happen, then we need to hear about it and, and know what we can do about it. Uh, but these are really designed for families. Um, but they're welcome to hang out, hang out with you and us, absolutely. Um, um, these are um, 
all the things that we had to um, talk through. If there are any questions that uh, are related to safety and health, um, that if you weren't able to attend on a Tuesday, if you ask those questions, I could take a stab at answering them or circle back with you. Uh, same thing uh, with any, any questions around uh, housing, and not housing, sorry, um, on arrival for move-in day on the 20th. If there's anyone who is unable to type because you're driving or uh, have any other reasons where typing might be an issue, please feel free to unmute and ask your question. We're happy to, uh, to get those as well. All right, we have a quiet evening today. Not more covered everything so succinctly that we have no questions. There's two questions, three questions flying wow. in. Wow. Okay. Um, so the outline for the 20th, uh, we will definitely be sending you an email which will uh, outline everything, absolutely. And it, I will also post it on Facebook. So if you have not yet joined us on Facebook and you have an account, please do so. I, I regularly post over there. And then we will also post it on our website. So um, it'll be multiple places. Um, safety question, they're indoor or caged storage for electric bikes. Oh, uh, actually, there is an indoor space where you can park your bike. It's brand new. It is in our uh, mail hall that was recently renovated. And um, it actually hasn't even had a full on um, inaugural opening of the building. Inside that building, there is a space where you could park your bike. And if you have an electric, fancy electric bike, your student might choose to park there. Uh, no cages that uh, that I'm aware of. You, Jimmy, do you know any cages? No, I was just thinking about, um, you know, in the residence halls, they generally like to keep uh, the amount of extra equipment down. Um, but I did see, you know, small bikes and things like that people were able to have in their dorms. Um, a big giant electric bikes, uh, if they are uh, high high value. Um, I would just make sure that the security is there for them. Um, I like to ride my road bike all over town, and uh, it's it's definitely I'm always looking out just to make sure. But um, as for the uh, storage for giant electric bikes uh, indoors, it's that one in Mayo Hall, uh, and then that's uh, the the other one that I might be aware of is the ASCMA uh container down on the waterfront and that would be have to be negotiated with the associated students all right uh when do we get move-in times um we uh, the families will our parents will not be receiving any information with regard to uh move-in times those move-in times are specific to the student will be mailed to the student uh at their csum email by uh the sender will be housing at csum.edu uh, I have, uh, the last I checked, they said early August, which is just around the bend. So you should be seeing something next week for that. Will freshmen be living on Golden Bear? Uh, they are not. We have, we have removed that uh, program. Um, is there a roommate assignment process? Yes. And that's a really good question for housing folks. So when you meet with them, please ask them what their process is, but there is. Uh, such a thing. Is there a packing list? Yes. Uh, comment on more. Would you find that um, link and add to chat while I go through the questions? Um, thank you. Do you have suggestions for how to apply for, uh, for campus jobs? Um, yes, <laughs> we have suggestions. Um, we will be introducing you as family members, just so you know how we do things. Uh, to student employment when you arrive on campus. Remember I mentioned there'll be a, uh, a little space where a lot of us will be um, 
waiting to welcome you. Uh, student employment will be there. They'll have a table and you can ask them questions and, and get a feel, feel for what to expect. And then on the 29th or the 30th um, of August, we're still scheduling that. Uh, there will be a similar fair for the students to see who the different resources are and who the different people are and student employment will be there as well. And uh, there might be some uh, people who are interested in offering positions to students uh, also uh, in that mix. So um, they will get definitely get an opportunity to get more information. Um, yes. And Vanita, I'm going to put the uh, link to the student employment uh, that's currently available to give people to give families an idea of what's available. Um, you can search student employment through the Cal Maritime website, and that will sure. Get Just um, if my son brings his bike, is the area around Cal safe to ride in? I'll take it. <laughs> well, me riding around all the time, um, you know, directly around campus, uh, you got to be a little bit careful uh, just in the Vallejo area. But on the other side of the bridge, uh, it's really good. You just go straight out uh, right on campus before you get to the uh, PIAC, our physical education center right there at the start. Uh, that's the entrance to the um, to the bridge route. And I'll usually bike across there and up into the Crockett Hills. Uh, there's also an opportunity to get on the Vallejo Ferry and go into San Francisco, which is a really, really wonderful ride. Uh, I'll actually do it and I'll take my bike and I'll go right across the Golden Gate Bridge, things like that. Um, nice, nice getaway on the weekends. Um, overall, um, Vallejo is um, okay. Um, you have to be mindful and careful of your surroundings. Um, always go out in um, company, not go alone and uh, Avoid late nights and such, but overall, I think um, it, it, it's okay. And like Kamara Moore said, there's a great ride across the Carquinez Bridge. It has uh, a bike walk lane, and on the on the other side, um, there is a restaurant that most uh, families like to go to after uh, capping. So if you plan to go to the Dead Fish, please make your reservation sooner than later. Um, and uh, looks like Kamala Moore is uh, actively uh, providing you links. But here's a question for you, sir. What is a proper haircut mentioned in the cadet handbook? All right, let's look this up right now. So uh, the grooming, or grooming uh, uniform and grooming standards have been updated uh, to uh, be uh, non-gender binary. So the most recent uh, iteration of it, I'm looking it up right now, has the haircut um, for uh, anyone. It does not have to be the traditional haircut as you see, like I have. Um, anybody can have long hair, but it has to be pulled back into a single point uh, or a single braid. And then uh, that hair is not allowed to fall uh, three inches below the shoulders. So that actually stems from a uh, historical safety standard in the maritime industry, where if, uh, if you do have long hair, it needs to stay out of uh, the way of rotating machinery and things like that. Um, and so at least for haircut, that's it. And then in terms, of, uh, in terms of where to find that exact definition, all you have to do is go to the back of the handbook and look in the appendix, and it is in there on neat and clean. It's right there in the back. So um, if you have any questions on that, you can look in the appendix. Thank you. Um, there is one other piece that often comes up, and um, do when do we get textbooks for students. So just keep that in mind that we want students to go to class and find out from their faculty what exactly they need. Um, there isn't a list that you'll find of textbooks uh, online or um, anyone can give to you. Each student needs to work with their faculty, find out what they need. Often faculty try to find um, uh, 
resources at no cost for students. So you're not buying $200 textbooks if it, if they, if it can be avoided. So that's a question that often comes up. So I'm just addressing it ahead of time. Um, yes. Vanita, I, I want to apologize. Um, there, what it does define it in the back, but it's more def, more defined for hair requirements on page seventeen of the Cadet Handbook. Uh, this long hair is defined that that falls past the back of the shirt or collar when not secured. Uh, long hair must be pulled into a single type bun on the midline or in the back of the head. Single braid, gathered braids, or ponytail, and uh, that was correct about the three inches below the bottom of the shirt collar. Um, and then short hair, uh, that's just the definitions for the hair requirements that are mentioned earlier in the handbook. Thank you. All right. Anything else, families, family members? A special seminar, could it be um, related to Title IX training? Do you know? Terry, um, if you could have your student um, take that particular email and forward it to me at orientation at csum.edu, I'll uh, look through it and find out what the status is and get back with him and maybe even um, circle back at the next session to uh, let everyone know what the what might be going on. Uh, I am aware that there is Title IX training that all students must complete prior to arrival on campus. It takes about an hour to compl complete that training. And we are currently working uh, with the the, the company that provides that training uh, to work on um, giving us that link. So uh, hang tight if it is Title IX, if it is anything else, uh, please um, do forward that email to me and I will be happy to follow up with them. So that is the sexual harassment Title IX training. Um, so if that has gone through, my understanding was that we were still waiting, um, but um, please do, Terry, have your students send me what their, their question is, so I'll follow up. Um, how many cadets are starting next month? As of today, it's 200. So it's a um, big class for us or a, a nice size class for us, but in comparison to other universities, it's a small class, um, but uh, 200. And uh, can students use Mac or do they need a microphone? Mac is just fine. I'm using a Mac. The campus is slowly but surely um, moving towards uh, Mac. There are some engineering courses that um, might possibly need um, a PC, but those are available uh, in our computer labs. So your student doesn't need two computers or doesn't need to forego a Mac um, uh, to utilize just a little bit of uh, for that for their class. We have we have that covered in our in our um, computer labs. Uh, Vanita, I think we missed one uh, from Sally. Uh, when will these recordings uh, um, be available? Thank you, um, Sally, the, the last two are already up um, and I will probably get this one uh, tonight sometime and I'll forward it to our PR. Uh, they have to upload them and they are very responsive. Um, so I suspect in the next few days, couple days, maybe by Monday, uh, it should be up or latest by Tuesday, but the last two are already there. And if you go to um, our CSUM webpage, top left corner, click on Keelhaller Family. And on that Keelhaller Family webpage, um, there's orientation in your left. Just click on that and you'll find it there. Um, are they at a disadvantage if they don't have a laptop? Um, I would say not. Uh, we have computer labs where they can complete their homework or their assignments. Homework sounds more high schoolish, but, um, you know, assignments and such. Um, 
uh, if they have another device like an iPad, that also um, is uh, sufficient. If they feel like they are falling behind, uh, have them talk to uh, someone on campus, maybe the Dean of Cadets, um, and to share um, if, if there's a concern and we'll see what we can do to assist. Do most students bring TVs? Is cable included in their rooms? These are housing questions, but I will let you know that a lot of students have TVs and no cable. Cables is, cable is uh, not something our students rely on so much. They're more Netflix and Hulu and HBO Max type of uh, generation, right? And and Vanita, I think most of the residents do have uh, regular Ethernet cable access through the wall, so that would be a uh, much more live way to to do that. But cable TV, I don't think has been on the campus since I was here, and it was never good then. <laughs> but the internet is very reliable. Good, Heather. Uh, no, there is no problem if he does not prefer a Mac. You could pick either or and they'll be fine. Um, can you please repeat what the cadets should wear on the 20th? Um, great question. Uh, they can wear whatever they feel like wearing when they arrive. When they arrive, we will give them the uniforms and separately we'll hand them a bag in which they will put their PT gear. It'll be in their hands separately. So uh, when you go to your room to settle in and put your uni uh, uniforms and belongings in, they'll have the, the bag separately uh, and they will be expected to hop into those, uh, into the PT gear before they come down to the quad. And this will also be clearly explained uh, in a follow-up email. So um, good question. I'm glad you brought it up so I can, I can, um, yep. Oh. If I can see it. There's the PT gear right there. <laughs> yeah. So it will give, we'll give them a bag so they can throw everything else in their big black and yellow tote. Um, but they'll be given a bag so they can hold on to their um, PT gear separately and they can hop into it when they're in their room. Uh, do students need a printer? Some prefer to have a printer, uh, but we also have printing machines across campus in key spots and they, um, it, they walk you through creating um, uh, a credit with that company and you swipe your card and it charges you for the print. Um, not very many faculty want printed stuff. Um, your assignments are delivered uh, through our um, Brightspace or Canva program. Um, so they don't have a lot to print, but um, if I know some students bring printers for their, op for their rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, Vanita, we had a question from Heather. I'm not sure it was answered. Uh, Follow-up question about computers. My son does not prefer a Mac. Um, is that a problem? And I can just answer that um, that one. The uh, Mac versus PC on the campus, I was an instructor for two years prior to working in the Commandant's office. And I know that um, things are formatted in a way that both PC and Mac can be read through the majority of the material on uh, that goes through the academics. And so I think either one will be okay. Uh, when do they get the awards and ribbons for their uniform? So the uh, Eagle Scout, I'm actually also an Eagle Scout myself. Uh, the ribbons for those uh, can be available as soon as they arrive on campus. Uh, they can just be per purchased through the bookstore. My son is play, uh, pl uh, planning on bringing his scuba gear to dive with the ocean um, club. Is there scuba gear storage? Uh, I can, you know. Actually, uh, may I, um, Jimmy, I think we don't need to worry about it because uh, on August 15th, when you meet with the panel for sense of belonging, that's a great question for them. So hold tight. Um, can you show the PT gear again? The t-shirts and the shorts is really what they're gonna be wearing, putting on. Could you tell us the page of the handbook? Maybe they can scroll through. Page uh, page 14. And if you go into the, 
So chapter one, Corps of Cadets, and that goes from page five all the way through uh, page. We're almost there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> through page 22. So page five through 22 has all the information uh, regarding the Corps of Cadets, as well as uh, all the different uniforms that are required and that cadets wear on the campus. Uh, the PT gear is generally one that we will uh, reserve for special days like this, but uh, knowing that for orientation, uh, a lot of the times the sizing for the khaki uniform, uh, we need to get those all fit and sent to the tailor during the week. Uh, we'll have the cadets in the PT gear that way uh, because it's hot and they can get used to the program. And then by the time Friday rolls around, everybody will be in khakis and looking good for their first formation for one of their first formations. Practice for when the whole Corps gets there on Monday. Should students have an iron and ironing board for uniforms? Um, that's always a good thing. We don't have it as a requirement per se, but um, depending on your students' a desire to look sharp, it's always a good thing. Um, can iPads work instead of a laptop? We really don't want to be in the business of uh, requiring one over the other, it's a personal preference. Um, not having either, uh, the preference would be to bring at least your iPad if you don't have a laptop. Uh, but it's really the student's uh, comfort with how they work and how they can get assignments done. Um, if they are just as familiar with iPads, I think that would be fine. Um, yes. Uh, Vanita, there was one that was sent directly to me, but I'll just say it out loud. Um, my son is trying to get a parking permit for lot O and it's not available to purchase on the website for the fall, only for the spring. Uh, they were available to purchase mid-July. They're trying to get a response via email. Um, yeah, so please, um, if you need any follow-up, um, I'm happy to help. Uh, send me an email, orientation at csam.edu. Uh, I know the person who handles the... Um, Parking passes were, was out for a couple of days. So it could just be that they're waiting to um, get back with you. But feel free to forward me what you're waiting to hear on and I'll be happy to check on it and get back with you. Uh, do they get one khaki shirt and one pant to wear daily? Of khakis, two. Oh, let me look, let me look at what the uh, tea bag two. was. Yep, two, I believe. Um, give me a minute to confirm. And no, there's no dry cleaner on campus. There are laundromats in each of the res halls and students are expected to do their own laundry um, and dry it. And then if they bring an iron, um, get it ready for uh, wear uh, on a regular basis. Yes, uh, and to confirm, I think it's two of each they're getting. Two, two. of each. There is. Um, and on Tuesday evening, they will be um, requested to put on their khaki pants. Uh, they don't, they're not, they're uh, not hemmed at the bottom. So they will wear their khaki and somebody will help um, figure out what the right length is going to be. They're going to pin it and then send it to the tailors. The tailors will um, get it hemmed and returned for Commandant uh, Moore to host uh, the, the full-on formation on Friday. Um. You want no, to take that or me? Do, do most cadets usually purchase additional uniforms? Uh, I will, I'll say that a lot of cadets, if they, uh, you know, misuse something, they tear it, or if there is a problem, um, then they're available to purchase more. Uh, we also have um, some uh, donations down from the upper class, if there are anybody who have basic needs, um, things of that nature. Uh, I actually was able to collect off of the senior class um, who was graduating this last year on the bear, uh, two full uh, about pallet size bins full of uniform donations. So there are options outside of that, uh, but usually if they want to do, uh, there we go, uniform closet in the inclusion center. And uh, if they want to purchase new ones, you can do that through the bookstore. 
These are wonderful, great questions. I'm glad that um, Kamala Moore is here to um, answer more than just uh, uniform questions because he's done so much on campus. He's been a faculty member and he's now in the Kamala and he was a student. So he's got like all of these facets that are he can cover. Um, are all uniform pieces labels uh, labeled or stitched with cadet's name? So that one, uh, everybody gets a name tag. So you're given uh, two different colors of name tag. One is black and one is gold. Uh, for the uh, different uh, uniforms, one is the khaki uniform, which has the black name tag, and the gold would be for your salt and pepper uniform. Uh, it's very similar to the color that I have on right here. And uh, that's the way that usually goes. We also, um, for the cruise, uh, usually get, not usually, we, we uh, get together and we will order the uh, khaki coverall. And that khaki coverall, uh, depending on the timing with the bookstore, it's either an iron-on or it's uh, embroidered in with their last name so that everybody can be identified on the cruise when we're having lifeboat drills and things of that nature. Uh, will Friday formation be filmed and on Facebook? Comment on more if you invite me to formation on Friday. I will come at 7.20 and film it for You're the invited. families. You are invited. <laughs> um, it has to be on my calendar or I'll forget. Uh, but okay. yes, I can definitely film um, a brief part of it and put it on Facebook, of course. Thank you for asking. Um, is tailoring this extra charge? No, it's part of your uniform issue cost. So don't worry about it. Uh, should clothes have names in them? Um, doesn't hurt. We, we definitely, uh, I, I definitely think uh, their covers, their ball caps, they should put their name because they have to take them off and on depending on um, where they are. A common more can speak to it, uh, but definitely uh, on that. But others, it's, it's a personal choice, I guess. I would I would highly recommend writing your name and everything. <laughs> <laughs> highly recommend. It's not that it's uh, there's that you know in the maritime industry we teach uh, responsibility and looking out for each other, no pilfering, things of that nature. But sometimes with them all being uh, khaki in color, they will get switched. So good. Or blue sweatshirts. Uh, you know they have they'll get a sweatshirt and a Patagonia jacket. Those are all everyone is wearing the same thing. So maybe it doesn't hurt to put a. Uh, tape on it on your own or put your name in with um, with a marker my um, my own Patagonia rain jacket came back to me after the cruise as well so that was good that I have my name in there <laughs> all right my daughter is a transfer but can uh, she still go on cruise uh, if yes when does she apply and uh, which what's her major What's the major? You can unmute and tell us, Gina. Um, my daughter is a transfer student, but her major would be uh, shipment. Is a shipment uh, the the one for the uh, the cap for the um, to drive the ship? What do you call okay. that? Is marine that transportation. Marine transportation. Yeah, marine, yeah. She wants to major in that, but she's a transfer. But um, if I heard that every summer uh, they go on a cruise and can she still participate even though she's a um, transfer this yeah. coming summer? Yeah, so she's coming in in the fall, correct? Like yes. by upcoming here? Yeah, yeah, she'll she'll be able to go on cruise with everybody else um, as a freshman. There's there, everybody applies in the same at the same time frame uh, for the cruise as a course. And then, uh, yes, so that should be a thing. Uh, I can go ahead and take the next one, Vanita. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Go ahead. Okay. So, Terry, uh, yes, there is a, a merit to merit system, but it's at the moment, um, if you look through the cadet handbook, uh, it says this is the one from last year, and it says Office of Community Standards. And I believe that is chapter five, page 47. And uh, that will give you kind of an overview of the uh, various things that the cadets will be responsible for. And uh, when, via, you know, uh, it's unfortunate, but when via violations do happen, um, the way that the system works is you have a, 
uh, judicial officer panel, which is the cadet leaders from the upper class from the Corps of Cadets, uh, who will uh, determine whether or not there was responsibility. And uh, if there was responsibility, uh, if it was a simple thing like missing a formation, uh, which we are going to make sure that we're all there on time, things like that this year, uh, then that would be something like 10 demerits. Now, the process for which they can make that up and uh, and overcome that so that it doesn't uh, show or be on their record or anything of that nature, and this is part of the leadership program, we have a lot of extra duty uh, opportunities that are around, and I'm actually working on a sign-up list so that they can be really kind of amazing extra duty opportunities that didn't exist in the past. Um, you know, you can work our soccer game and work with the referees. You can work uh, with Vanita doing whatever Vanita needs to do. Um, <laughs> it's not just like, hey, go and go and clean the head or clean the bathroom or anything like that. You know, if there's opportunities to do those kinds of things, but we're going to make it a little bit more engaging this year. Um, one of the big ones is working on the golden bear to work off uh, whatever those, those are. And as for merits, uh, we're planning on doing a, a divisional point system this year, which is a kind of a new thing that I'm instilling. And that'll be, uh, you can sort of earn credit towards, you know, you don't want to say earn credit towards uh, when you do bad things, but uh, there will be opportunities for uh, meritorious uh, rewards. We want to incentivize the good behavior and uh, discourage the poor behavior. That's kind of the way it works. Thank you. Uh, Lisa, we'll hold off on any questions around um, courses and how those work. Um, and that goes for Gina as well. Uh, when we have our uh, advisors with you, they are quite well versed in how these roadmaps for your students will work and such. So um, hang tight and we'll um, get you all those answers when uh, Katie and Crystal are with us. Uh, when can you sign up for ROTC? Do you know? Uh, yeah, I believe it's uh, right away. Uh, there is, so there's two different kind of uh, ROTC and military programs, um, initiation programs for the campus. Uh, one is we work directly with an ROTC unit out of Berkeley. Um, and that ROTC unit, there's a representative for it down in the Marine Programs trailer. And those are for uh, cadets who are wishing to get into uh, OCS, Officer Candidate School, towards their graduation date. Uh, we actually have our Corps Commander, Kalai Pratt, who is in OCS for the Marine Corps right now. And uh, he has been doing it, working with that ROTC unit in Berkeley. So that can be asked of the cadet leaders as soon as they get there and they'll be able to refer them to where they need to go. Uh, the other one is what Vanita just typed into the chat, uh, SSMP, which is the Ship Strategic Midshipman Program. Uh, this one is actually uh, relates a lot to uh, what our uh, industry is uh, entailing. So it used to be called the Merchant Marine Reserve. Now it's called the Ship Strategic Midshipman Program. And basically what you do is you sign up for it um, while you're a cadet. And then once you graduate with your license, uh, or they will actually help pay you, pay for your uh, time here at the institution. And uh, I have the contact for the head of that program for the campus. His name is Carlton Bartlett. And uh, we can uh, set that up if they approach any of the Commandant's office uh, during the first week, we should be able to set that up. And the next one was, does ROTC work towards any branch of service? Uh, yes, that's a combination ROTC unit. Uh, they are, uh, I know that there are a bunch of different folks. We had a few go into the Air Force, uh, three or four Navy last year, and a few Marine Corps, but that is a combo ROTC unit for any branch. Um, our web website is pretty up to date. So if you have any questions um, and you put some keywords in, you might find um, the information you're looking for. Don't be shy. Um, like for SSMP, I actually had never 
searched for it, but I just did it, put SSMP in search button, and it, there's a page and it gives you FAQs and some, some um, general information about the program. So um, as your questions come up, please save them for the appropriate presenters, but also feel um, free to check out the website and see what information is already available. Um, sorry, I meant to thank you, um, Jimmy, for your response on that. Thank you. No problem. I, I will tell you, one of the things I had wish I had done here was got involved in that. I thought that was a really good deal. So. So we are right at 630. Um, and I want to make sure that we can all go back to um, the life we have outside work and outside taking notes on things for our students. Um, so with that, I would like to thank uh, Kamran Moore for uh, taking the time to be with us and sharing his experience and, and insight on um, very many things. Uh, and I also want to thank all the families for being here today. Um, I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Have a wonderful weekend. And uh, should you think of anything else, um, don't lose any sleep over it. Just email it to uh, orientation at csum.edu and I'll be happy to take care of it. Have a wonderful evening. Everybody have a nice evening and a nice weekend. Bye. Bye.